the nouns, the movement still right. A super song for the cause. Fill a load of your brain for the episode. It was just begun. From the black, the be a black When you think of American supercars, what are the first ones that come to your mind? It has to be the Corvette and the Viper, right? Cars like the Mustang, Camaro, and Challenger are primarily muzzle cars, and cars like the Celine S7, the Vector W10, and the Hennessy Venom GT aren't mass-produced enough to become famous and associated with American automotive history in the same way that the Corvette and the Viper are. So, to me, the Viper is right up there with the Corvette, and I had to naturally have one in my supercar collection. Every single die-cast car is associated with a certain story attached to it. And in today's video, I want to tell you a little bit about this particular die-cast car you're looking at here, which is a 124 scale 2008 Dodge Viper SRT10 by Jada or Jada. This is the first Jada car in my entire collection that I'm presenting on my channel, so you're going to get introduced to a couple of features that you will not see in other 124 scale cars. And that's what I love about Jada. Now this is a car that I got pretty much early on when I started collecting diecast model cars. I got this car in December 2015, and of course I was looking for the most famous supercars at the time. And Jada cars are actually pretty rare in this neck of the woods, and by that I mean Central Europe. I did get this car from France, though. It was an eBay seller who was having it as an auction, because even back then it was quite hard to find them as a, you know, like a fixed price buy immediately kind of offering. But I still participated in that auction, and... Unlucky for that guy, not many other people were interested, so it was maybe like one other bidder. And I actually got this car for five euros fifty as the winning bid. And that was fifteen euros shipping, so twenty euros and fifty cents. Great deal for a one twenty four scale car, but not such a good deal for the seller. However, I think the car is in good hands, so I'm sure he'll be happy. But yeah, I mean it just gives you an idea of the fact that Jada cars are a combination of being rare and at the same time quite unknown in Europe compared to the US. So I'm very happy that I got this car. So here's a look at the car in its box. As you can see, it says big time muzzle right here. It's part of that collection. And over here, you can see the front of this vehicle looking very menacing. Here's a look at the back of the box. Original Jada style. And here is a look at the back, or the other side of the box. So I'm going to get this car out of the box, and I'll see you in a bit. The Dodge Viper has undergone several facelifts, and the easiest way you can tell which generation you're looking at is by the headlights and the way the vents on the hood are positioned. This is the fourth generation of the Dodge Viper, introduced in 2008 and internally known as the ZB2, while the third generation was known as the ZB1. The biggest difference was the introduction of the, get this, naturally aspirated, 8.4 liter V10 engine, raising the car's power output to 600 horsepower at 6,100 RPM. 
The top speed of the Gen 4 Viper is a little over 320 km per hour, and the car can achieve 0 to 100 km per hour in 3.7 seconds, making it part of the same class as the Audi R8 GT and the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560-4, at least on the drag strip. The 124 scale 2008 Dodge Viper SRT10 by Jada is a truly marvelous scale representation of one of the most iconic American supercars of the past three decades. The model is available in many different colors and configurations, like the one you're seeing here, which is the metallic blue and white stripes, but then there's also a metallic red with white stripes, also looks great. And then we also have a yellow with black stripes. And we have a black with red stripes, an orange with a black hood, white with black hood, and so on, with some of these versions also having different rims. Now here's one downside of Jada, and that is that the front wheels do not turn side to side, and only roll like the back ones. Respectively, the steering wheel also does not turn either. This is pretty much all negative aspects of the model car summed up, because everything else is just gorgeous. To begin with, the metallic hue of the paint. This is typical for Jada. No other company can make metallic paints as beautiful as Jada can. Maisto, Motormax, etc., for example, just sprinkle in the metallic pigments, which don't look that good. Another iconic thing about Jada's model cars are their distinct chrome wheels. Now, some people think these look gaudy and childish and ruin the look of the original car, but I disagree, especially in the Dodge Viper's case. The Viper never had iconic factory rims in the first place, and these detailed chrome rims give the model a true wow factor, you know, and make it draw plenty of good attention in any collection. Jada also pays attention to detail, as ventilated brake discs and brake calipers are also present on this model. However, the discs do not turn with the wheel. The fact that apart from the doors, the hood and the trunk can also be opened on this 124 scale car, which is pretty rare, is another amazing thing about Jada cars. So to summarize, I can say that this model is amazing and well worth its price as long as you can get it for less than 30 bucks. So taking a look at the front of this model car, you can see that we have this iconic Dodge Viper symbol, which is that of a Viper ready to bite. Below, we got these air vents, and unfortunately behind them, they don't have any kind of a grill texturing even. It's just some black plastic, plain plastic. So. Jetta is not that particularly good in terms of that kind of detail, but in all other aspects, they have done a pretty solid job with this model, as I will show you in a second. For example, um, if we take a look at the headlight, you can see that there are no pegs, and the xenon headlamps themselves also have a little bit of a texture going on. And from a distance, it looks very convincing. I feel like the third and fourth generation of the Dodge Viper had arguably one of the best headlights, maybe even better than the fifth generation, although the fifth generation's headlights were also quite beautiful. But definitely an improvement over the first and the second generation. And below the headlights we have these fog lamps. Now, these aren't separate pieces, they're just silver paint on the car body, so not particularly interesting or well done. And I'm not quite sure why they have like this black piece in the center, because if it's not a separate light, why would you need a peg, right? I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be. However, um, if we move on further up to the hood, you can see that we have here a nice hood scoop. And then we have these three vents or hood vents on either side of the hood. And while they don't have any sort of grill texture, as I said earlier regarding the front part as well, um, they still look good. And I think that the hood, especially the vented hood, 
gives the whole car this more sporty and aggressive feel. And here's a close-up of the car's engine. The engine blocks are in chrome, and the rest of it is painted red. You can see that it says Viper on each of the blocks, which is good. So it's got a decent amount of detail for a 124 scale car. You can see over here we have um, the windshield washer fluid, I think, and another little container here. Nothing special, but it still looks classy. And keep in mind, this is the huge 8.4 liter V10, as mentioned earlier, naturally aspirated, so no turbos. It's quite a feat to create such a massive engine, but then again, that's what America is known for, right? You're not going to see these kind of displacement values on a European engine block. Such a huge engine therefore justifies also this huge hood. Here's a look at the car's side profile. You can see that up here it says Viper SRT10 on the side. And here's a look at the back of the car. Um, you can see that we have a Jada license plate at the back as well as another Viper logo on top of it. Regarding the taillights, I'm not particularly happy with them because they don't have much detail and they have two pegs on each of them. So, not a very sort of well done part of the car. And below the taillights, you can also see that we have another light. I think these are the cornering lights. And what's nice about them is that they're also a separate piece instead of just, you know, like a little bit of silver paint here. But on the downside, they also have pegs, so sometimes you got to choose whether you just want to have like a little bit of paint instead of an actual separate piece, or if you do have a separate piece, you're going to have to live with a peg, and that's the kind of choice that you have to make when you're buying budget model cars instead of super expensive ones. But that's all right, because what I like about the back of the car most is the fact that the trunk can be opened. And so, you can see right here, it lifts up pretty high. And we have a fairly decent sized trunk with a privacy cover on top of it so that you can basically use this as a two layered trunk in the sense that you can put like some of your luggage down here and some up here. But if I turn on the flash, you can see that this part in the center it doesn't have a depth or anything, so in reality, there isn't too much space. But it's still nice. As we move on to the interior of the car, again you can see that the details are not particularly well done. I mean, if you look at the air vent over here. It's there, but it doesn't have much detail. It's not painted. And if you look at the air vents in there, they're also pretty rudimentary. As in, they don't have much going on. You could, of course, take this car apart and paint all these extra bits yourself to make it all look a whole lot better. For example, what you could do is you could look at those gauges right there that are part of... Like, in the Dodge Viper, the gauges are also on the center console instead of just behind the steering wheel. So, you could take a little bit of white paint and paint those three dials of the gauges white, because on the real Dodge Viper, the gauges are white. And then you could maybe add some details to the CD player here, but otherwise it's still quite basic. The seats, however, are done well. As you can see, um, they are racing seats. They've got the side bolstering and everything, so they look pretty good. And now let's move on to the driver's side. So at the driver's side, um, you can see that the floor pedals are right there, and they're made out of chrome, and they even have a texture to them, so they look pretty nice. Here's a shot of the um, instrument panel, which is in red, so I kind of like that. Looks pretty good, with the black surrounding it. And regarding the steering wheel, I mean, you can see that we have like this a typical Dodge Viper sort of steering wheel with uh, bolts and all that in the center. 
The steering wheel is done pretty well. And you also have the chrome shifter right there. So it's not a bad interior per se. I mean, you could always improve it with some paint yourself because the details are there. It's just that they aren't painted and everything is black. But again, um, you don't buy Jada cars because of the interior, right? I mean, you buy them because of the absolutely gorgeous exterior. So this is the interior, and while it could have been done better, I'm still pretty happy with it. And now let's take a look at the bottom of the car. You can see that it says Jada right there at the bottom. Number 91,804, scale 124, Dodge Viper SRT 10, Chrysler 2008. Use day under license. That's quite funny. But yeah, I mean, check out the tire tread on these wheels. They're looking pretty good. We also have some um, chrome detail for the rear differential, or limited slip differential, because the engine's up front, so this can't be a transmission detail. Got a few more riveting here. Nothing special, but I mean, it's all right. Uh, where's the exhaust system? I'm just asking myself that. Let's see. I think it's I think it's this on the side. This is the exhaust of the Dodge Viper. Could have been done better, but yeah. Well, guys, I hope you liked this review of the 124 scale 2008 Dodge Viper SRT10 by Jada. It's a pretty rare car around these parts of the world, and I'm happy to have it in my collection, especially because of the color, the racing stripes, the amazing rims, chrome rims that is, and the fact that everything opens on this 124 scale diecast car, which is pretty rare, because you always have to either sacrifice the uh, hood or the trunk. But the fact that everything opens is great. Now the only real downside of this model car to a diecast car collector is the fact that it is too big. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I mean by that. Let's just close everything first. Now if I take the measurements of this car, you can see that it has a length of approximately 7.5 inches, maybe a little less than that. About 7.5 inches, which is 19 centimeters. And it has a width of... A little over eight centimeters and three and a quarter inches I think. It looks a little off on the camera because the camera is a little higher and further away than my measuring tape. But if you plug these values into Wikipedia and then multiply by 24, you're actually gonna be surprised to see that the values exceed that of the real Dodge Viper. So this car is not 124 scale, but rather 122 scale or 123 scale. It's a little bigger than what it's supposed to be, which is something that I like in the sense that I don't feel ripped off because I've had a 124 scale Welly Dodge Challenger where the model's actually smaller than 124 scale because it's it's a huge muscle car basically. So in that case, you actually feel ripped off because you're paying for a smaller car than advertised. In this case, this is actually a bigger car than advertised, so you get more for your money. But at the same time, it does feel a little off when you place it next to your other 124 scale models. So if that's the kind of thing that bothers you a lot, then don't get this car, or not this car in particular, but just avoid 124 scale Jada cars because a lot of them are a little bigger than they're supposed to be. So Jada is not particularly precise when it comes to maintaining their scale. But for all other intents and purposes, they make some pretty flashy and amazing looking models. And um, the metallic paint of Jada is really absolutely gorgeous. And no other manufacturer makes metallics like Jada does. And the fact that everything opens on 124 scale Jada cars is another bonus. So, ultimately, it's up to you to make up your mind whether you want to buy 124 scale Jada models or not. 
The fact is, they are a little bit rare, especially here in Europe, and the combination of all these other flashy uh, details of them is what I love about them. So, thank you guys for watching, and I hope this review was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Imperial Diecast, signing out.